We're here at the lowest place on earth to put this tripod through the ultimate stress test, a dip in one of the saltiest waters on the planet to put the Sackler Flotec through the absolute most gruesome torture. There's actually so much salt in this water that you can literally sit and float. It even has its own musk to it. Let's start off by saying that it totally breaks my heart to even do this. The Flotec 75 by Sackler is an absolute delight. Sackler took it upon themselves to answer a problem we didn't even know we had. After working with the Flotec for about 10 minutes, it starts to become apparent that all other tripod systems seem primitive. For the Flotec, less is more, and one latch reveals the genius in its design. Pulling just one lever unlocks the entire length of its legs. It's really one of those things that's kind of hard to explain, but going back to individual clips, or even worse, those twist locks, is something you'd wish would stay in the past. Sackler is really well known for being high-end, from large-scale production to rental houses, packing everything from 2 to 60 kilograms. Their new system does not fall short on expectations. The head is capable of holding between 2 and 8 kilos, although it's worth mentioning that the head is attached to a standard 75 millimeter bull head. So if you're coming from a previous system, you can actually just mount it on the Flotec. The legs themselves can hold about 20 kilos. Weighing in at only 4.6 kilos, that's about 10 pounds for our American friends, the carbon fiber legs are not only super sturdy, but also lightweight. The legs are extremely thick and they feel like they can take quite the beating. I usually associate cheap carbon fiber with being more of an excuse to make something carbon fiber, but it seems Sackler has made the rigidity their priority. And this tripod is solid. Not to mention they include a handle that you can attach to the side of the tripod. And let's be real for a second, this is what every tripod needs. It's small and unobtrusive, and yet it's the only thing you need to carry the tripod. Manufacturers, pay attention. You need this. Which brings us here, to the Dead Sea. We're here to dip the tripod in the Dead Sea to test if the Sackler is built as well as it looks. Salt water is corrosive, oily, and when it's more than 30% of every cup of water, it actually leaves salt after even drying out, which accelerates the oxidization process. This makes dipping a tripod in salt water a really bad idea. But we're not going to just dip it. We're gonna leave it there for about an hour. Its only hope of survival is that the entire tripod is made of either plastic or carbon fiber, with the exception of the spikes at the bottom and some random doodads here and there. To give the tripod a fighting chance, we're actually gonna be removing the included mid-level spreader. Since it's made primarily of aluminum, and the head looks like it would be a victim to the salt water, but what we've been told by our friends at Sackler is that the head is actually sealed and shouldn't be a problem. So, here we go. So I'm going to try and unlock it and it looks Whoa. it's pretty smooth. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the legs seem to be working fine. It's funny, you can still see some of the crystals flying off as we open and close it, and it's full of oil. Other than that, so far it looks like it survived the Dead Sea. So a few things became apparent when we pulled it out. First of all, we noticed that there's a lot of salt crystals all over. You can see residual oil stains from when it was inside of the sea. And when we pulled it out, we actually realized there's a couple points that we didn't actually notice. So we noticed about here, there's screws all over the legs. Not exactly sure what they're for. 
kind of hoping that it doesn't ruin the smoothness of pulling up the legs. I'd say the thing that we're probably most scared about is how did the head perform? At the end of the day, Sakhlir is known for their smooth panning heads and the fluid drag system, which is top notch. I'd hate to see the Dead Sea ruin the fluid head drag system here. When we pulled the Sakhlir out of the water, it was pretty easy to open up the legs, so there's no immediate damage. The water doesn't seem to have affected the legs, so opening and closing it actually still works pretty okay. The Flotec has revolutionized the way we lift and carry our tripod, while maintaining a professional look and feel to it. I would feel more than comfortable adding most of my rigs to this tripod, and I definitely feel confident enough that my rig is secured. But alas, not all that gold glitters. As a working cinematographer, it's easy for me to justify the last tripod I'll ever need. Especially considering that 100% of my rigs cost more than the tripod. So for me, it's a solid investment to protect my other investments. But coming in at just under $1,700, the tripod is hardly the cheapest option. Spending $1,700 is a serious investment for some people, considering it's what some people spend on their cameras alone. That being said, if the price is in your ballpark, it's a solid investment. I'm a huge advocate for buy once and rent until you can buy it. This tripod is definitely a tool for your tools and it's meant to stay with you for a very long while. I don't know if there'll be any long-term damage, but stay tuned for our one month later review of the Flotec where we see if the Dead Sea was any match for this tripod. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing for some more content. I'm Adam Firmer from DIYphotography.net and I'll be seeing you in the next video. <laughs> Oh, my God.